in a small town of New York named Poughkeepsie that inhabited some 40,000 people was sent to a shock of terror in 1997 by a student's monitor and U.S. Army veteran as he went on a spree of brutalizing sex workers. This is the story of Kendall Stinky Francois, who managed to take the life of eight women before he was finally put behind bars in 1998. Poughkeepsie used to be a small town back in the 90s with limited inhabitants. Some of them started to go missing, however. The local police and those were directly related to the missing were the only ones who knew. He had a tall stature of six foot four and a heavy body. He was the student's monitor for Arlington Middle School. His body odor earned him the name Stinky from the students of the school and parents complained of his unhygienic habits as well. Who knew it was because of the many corpses that he has lived with? Dubbed the Poughkeepsie Killer by the news and media, Kendall was born on July 26, 1971. He used to play football in the school team. However, after graduation, due to his large build, he decided to enroll in the military instead of pursuing a career in sports. After receiving basic training in Fort Skill in Oklahoma, he returned home and got enrolled in Dutchess Country Community College. In 1990, he was declared a liberal arts major and got hired as the hall and detention monitor for the Arlington Middle School. During his time there between 1996 and 1997, no one knew a murderer was lurking among them. In fact, after he got caught, Teachers at the school revealed the truth about his inappropriate behavior and sexual jokes that he made while he touched their hair. He was, at the time, committing murders and stashing the bodies of his victims in his house. Police later noted the smell of fecal matter and soiled underwear with human waste lining the fabric at his house. What is even more disturbing was that his parents and sister used to live in the same house and either they got used to the reeking attic or they were too afraid to check what was rotting up there. According to investigations and publicly available records, his gruesome killing spree is believed to be started with his first victim, a 30-year-old woman named Wendy Myers, whom he lured in for sex after soliciting at the local Valley Rest Motel. He crushed her windpipe, giving her a painful death, and brought her corpse home to stash it in the attic to rot. This incident happened on the night of October 24, 1996. In the same year, he quenched his thirst for murder with a 29-year-old sex worker named Gina Barone, whom he picked up in his 1994 red Subaru and took her to the Route 9. While in the car, he choked her with such immense pressure that the bones in her neck broke, killing her instantly. He brought her dead body home and placed it next to Myers in his attic. He started the next year with an even more disturbing act of violence when Kathy Marsh, a pregnant woman, joined his victims in the attic. In January 1997, Kathleen Hurley disappeared, followed by Mary Healy Giaccioni, in November 1997. Then mother of three, Sandra Jean French, vanished in June 1998. As mystical as the disappearances were, they were horrifying and raised suspicion for the local police. The concerns of the rash of recent missing persons, just since October of 1996, three women were reported missing and all of them shared the same physical profile, all petite, white prostitutes. At this point, it was so much more than just a coincidence for the local detectives. The alarms finally raised when Marsh went missing who was last seen around the same time as the other three women. Police searched for the missing women, but there was no clue to be found. Sometime later, in November of 1997, Giaccione was reported missing when she failed to show up at her mother's funeral, and the reason her abduction, or possible murder at the time, was linked to the series of missing reports was that she shared the same physical profile as the other women. Police had no hard evidence or a suspect other than one, a longtime resident of Poughkeepsie, who shared a house with his parents. 
The seriousness of the matter rose to the point where police surveilled his house and even checked his bedroom, but could not find any reason to detain him. Kendall went on to be one of the many suspects until January 1998, the time when he got arrested for assaulting a prostitute in his parents' house and served 15 days in prison. The Poughkeepsie killer was again on the loose, and police had no solid evidence against him to nib the problem of missing people in the bud. Merely six months later, his second-to-last victim went missing. Sandra Dean French, whose car was found abandoned three days later, about three blocks away from Kendall's house, and after a break of a month and a half, his last victim. August Newsmaster was reported missing. Like all the other women who were yet to be found dead or alive, Newmaster shared the same physique, a short petite, white prostitute with brown hair and blue eyes, mostly. The police officers who were working the case stuck their final luck coincidentally on September 1, 1998. They pulled in on a gas station and confronted a man who claimed another man had just assaulted a woman nearby, and the attacker turned out to be none other than Kendall Francois. He was brought to the station for questioning, and the other missing women were also brought up. Soon, he admitted to his connection to the serial disappearances. Police knew the first place they had to look into and obtained a warrant to search his house. After merely an hour later, eight corpses recovered from the garbage-filled house at midnight. Five of them were stashed in the attic and three were recovered from the basement, ending the search for the missing women, as well as putting an end to the reign of a serial killer who was terrorizing the neighborhood for years. Seven of the bodies were of the victims that were reported missing and one was of a woman from New Rochelle, who was never reported missing. Out of all the reported incidents, one body was never found who was later mostly ruled out to be a possible victim, since she was a black woman and because of all his victims were white and found dead in his home. The bystanders were disgusted by the smell of the rotting dead bodies and the garbage that was found in the house. After he was presented in court, he was indicted on eight counts of first-degree murders and pleaded guilty. Ironically, he contracted HIV, possibly from one of his victims, and saved death penalty. However, he is now serving a lifetime in prison without parole. His family denied any knowledge of his sinister acts, since most of the stink of the rotting bodies was covered by the garbage that was already in the house. That's all for today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of our next videos. And I'll see you in the next one.